Hi, everyone. This is David Tannenbaum from San Francisco, and I'm here with Xufei Yang, who is in London. And surprisingly, we have gray skies in San Francisco, and she has sunny skies in London. So first of all, welcome, Xufei. Hello, David. It's really nice to see you. Nice all to see right. you. Yeah. I wish we could see you play live, but we have this wonderful on location series. I want to first ask you, you've done so much touring in your life, and now all of our wings are clipped. And I know you've been doing that, that wonderful garden series, but how has pand pandemic life been for you? Well, I guess it's difficult for, for everyone, including me. I guess that the, but the lucky side that I was in China last year. So I, when things got better in China and the, the concert started to revive and I was there, so I was able to do, do uh, quite a few concerts in China. But then after the Chinese, uh, after the new year, I was supposed to come back home in UK. And then the travel uh, was banned. The direct flight was banned between China and UK. So I couldn't come back, so I stayed in China. But luckily I, I spent the Chinese new year with my parents. And then the other great thing come, comes out of it is that I was able to do this concert in this historical temple in Beijing. So, well, I, I, I left home in UK for eight months, but there are, there are some good things I, I was able to do. So. Oh, that's great. Well, you, now to be. <laughs> yeah, you're doing my job for me because that was my next question. Tell us about <laughs> this temple in Beijing. Well, uh, what Richard asked me if I could film a concert in a historical venue, I had just been to a party in this called Zhizhou Temple in Beijing. And this was the first place came across my mind. Because in China, there are uh, many, many contemporary and fantastic, uh, spectacular concert halls, but they're all modern and they're all huge. And the historical places usually are very, uh, they, they, they reserved for <laughs> private, you know, for private visiting or usually, you cannot do public events or concerts in a historical venue. So this is a rare, rare place that you can actually do a concert. So I thought about this place, uh, would it be perfect for this historical uh, concert series? And um, of course, nothing easy, but with a group of friends help that we managed to make this concert happen. And uh, the concert was on my birthday. Oh. <laughs> so it marked um, the most special birthday I've ever had. Um, and also for me that uh, I'm from Beijing, it, it, this is a, a hidden gem really. I, I thought about, oh, I grew up in Beijing, but I never heard about this, this temple. And I asked my parents and my friends, seems like this is like a, a, a forgotten place, <laughs> mm. but it, it has 600 years of history. Wow. So it, both my dad and me, we, we got very interested and we looked up this place and the history and what happened there. It's all very interesting. Um, yeah, interesting background with this place. 600 yeah. years ago, the, the emperor, they, they had these monks there and, uh, for religious teaching. And uh, uh, yeah, and it's good that it's being revived now. And so we can do some cultural events, do some concerts there. So it was quite special. Sounds fantastic. Was it really the first time you had ever played the guitar in this place when you made the recording? Yes, that's right. A uh, first time. Um, they, they have different uh, halls. I know I, uh, this, this is the main hall where I played and uh, occasionally they do hold some small concerts. And I believe, I think I'm going to check with them. I think this is probably the first guitar concert ever happened in that wow. hall. And also that's... it's my first time to Later. Wow. And so how were the acoustics for you? Were they, just tell me what, what the sound felt like. Mm, well, we use, <clears throat> we use a little bit of amplification because it's quite a, a large hall and, mm. um, and also we had, uh, we had an audience. So, but I think I was really, I really, I was really happy with the sound there. It's, it's the atmosphere, which is very special because when you enter such an old place, you go to all the piers and then you see the ceilings. Oh, I hope that you can see the old ceilings that they preserved in the video. And there's this Chinese banner there. Oh, I haven't seen the videos. Uh, we answered, and then we were talking about whether we should take out the, the banners because it's very vintage. It shows in the pr probably pre uh, cultural revolution period. That's something like a service for the people, something like that. 
Now, I thought that it's quite interesting to keep them there, although that she's not related to my music, but it really shows the character and shows the age and you know, shows what ha has happened there. Yeah, the so, history. No. Yeah, exactly. So I, I'm really hoping that this character and this, this, this history, this feeling of this uh, age would come across in a video. Mm. Um, yeah, so when you enter such an old venue, you just feel something quite special there. You know, just to imagine what has happened there. There must be lots of stories. These old pillars, they must uh, have witnessed uh, many things. It's just a uh, quite a uh, special feeling. And I think they made the, uh, we had a professional team doing the, the film and doing the lighting and the sound. So. Anyway, the whole thing that uh, I, I think that was a quite a special event, and I, I really, really enjoyed it. So I hope that oh, that's everything comes in, in the video. Yeah, I really look forward to seeing it. Um, so you put this program together. Um, was it a program that you put together especially for this this place and this situation? And maybe just talk to us about the program a bit. Yes. So when we were uh, putting up everything together, I was thinking what I should play. I thought uh, definitely something I really love and something I really enjoy. <laughs> you know, it's my birthday and it's in this old place. And also we, we invited a small audience. They consist of professional musicians and uh, non-musicians, some normal, I mean, uh, how to say intellectual people, but they are not musicians. So they all have different tastes. So I wanted to, how to say, have something, I always wanted to play something for everybody. I try to have something for everybody in the concert. I mean, it's hard, but, uh, and especially this recital is not uh, that long. So I, I, I thought that I want to play something I really like, and I want to play something for everyone, and something that will work in this temple. Uh, so, so I draw up this program. Basically, the, the theme is Chinese and South America. So I started with a very old piece. I thought in the old venue, I, I should start with a very old piece, and that uh, uh, is called uh, Moon Spring uh, What's the title in English? I, I'm looking at it. It says a moonlit night on the Spring River. Yes, because you know, because there are different ways of translating it. Right. And it's a piece I really love. It's one of the classics. It's the I would say a, a classic piece of a, of the Chinese classics, and uh, so I started with that. Um, and then the next one, Ricardo, a uh, sweet del Ricardo, is by Jose Luis Molin. It's a piece that I played when I was a lot younger. But now I feel that it's very relevant to now because uh, Jose wrote this piece when he was in America and he's missing his homeland in Argentina. And I thought that uh, a lot of people there, they were, they are displaced from home because of the pandemic, including me. I mean, although I was in Beijing home, but I was missing my home in UK. Um, so I thought this is a kind of a feeling that would be related to a lot of people. Uh, so I chose that one, and uh, and then Milonga del Angel by Piazzolla. This year marks the centenary of Piazzolla, so I featured that. And uh, another two Chinese pieces. One of them is called Lake Baikal. It's a very well known, actually, it's a pop song. <laughs> Special thing is that the composer, he was in the audience. So, uh, and it was the first time I played live uh, in front of him. So that was quite a, quite a um, uh, how to say, I, I was kind of excited, but also a little bit anxious, you know, you playing this uh, well known song in front of the. the creator <laughs> but uh um and then and then in the end i thought that i better to play something old again uh, so i played uh around g string by bach again and then i finished with another south american piece so it's kind of a big variety a big mixture yeah um yeah so it's but, a lovely I, sorry go ahead yeah but everything i i, I love yeah well i think we should always be playing things we love and and it's a wonderfully varied program and it reminds me of something that Mozart said, which is he wanted his music to be for everyone, but the more you know, the more you get. That's so. true. I, yes, that's right. And I always think that guitar is such a, a versatile instrument. And I regard myself as a kind of a versatile player. You know, I like many, many different uh, things. I tend to not think about the style, you know, just I, if I love it and I think I can play them 
comfortably why not so i thought that this is a, a you know the versatility versatility is a advantage of our internet so why not use it yeah my my own feeling is that the world is too full of pretty much everything too many too many interviews too many guitarists too many people too many films too much of everything so we should only do what we really believe in and what we love it's it yes. doesn't we shouldn't do something because we're supposed to do it and so it's not like we're doing that yes i agree yeah. and only when you really love it yourself then you are able you you you're able to can can convey that expression yeah. that's a feeling to other people but if you are not loving it yourself i guess it's no way that you can there's no way and also if it's a piece that many people play you know if you feel like you have something different to say with it or something unique then play it but if other people are just playing it beautifully i just say okay that's fine i'll play something else you know so <laughs> speaking of speaking of versatility there's just one question i wanted to ask you aside from this program um and that is your work with ian bostrich um mm -hmm. you know I think about Julian Bream and Peter Pears, which was such a fantastic voice guitar duo. And it's really one of the only ones you can think of when you go back into the history of the guitar, a sort of long standing guitar voice duo that toured a lot together. And Bream was a young man when he started to play with Pears. Pears was in his mid 40s, and Bream was in his early 20s. And Bream said that nothing taught him about phrasing as much as working with a great singer like that. So now you're working quite a bit with really one of the great tenors of our time. And I'm just curious what you have learned from that experience. Oh, yes. It's, it's really it's, uh, interesting you talk about it because uh, the day before yesterday, I just made some, an, a, a play with him for another virtual concert. Uh, yes, I think I learned a lot from singers, not just the Ian and I worked with quite a few singers. I mean, singing is really the most expressive instrument of all. And uh, it's just the, and it, very different and they have lyrics, but so it's quite a direct expression. And uh, we, we, we don't have lyrics, so we, you know, we, how do you say, it, it's indirect. I just, uh, I think, for example, the expression and the phrasing and how they, how they uh, express, this is just uh, something like uh, until you work with the singers, you probably, you don't think about these things and you can't imagine these things when you're actually sitting next to a singer and then when they singing like half a meter away and then you feel your whole body is resonating, <laughs> uh, you know. Um, for example, myself, I, I always think that I'm very lyrical player and I put probably a, a big important, probably the biggest uh, factor for me is, is the phrasing. I think that's most important for me. But then when I'm working with singers, I realized that their requirement of the free, of the lyric, lyric, how is it, lyricism and the phrasing is even, even, even about what we need on the instruments. You know, it's just, uh, uh, yeah, so, 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 so this, uh, you know, how to say this? Uh, <laughs> well, I, I, let me let me tell you one thing that I feel, which is, you know, when working with singers, the phrasing is in the body. It's it's mm. purely physical. The body is the instrument, and I think it helps us feel in the body our phrasing, and it, it, it takes it out of the head and puts it, it makes it more physical, perhaps. Yeah, I think phrasing not all, I think it's not just the physical. For example, when lots of people ask me how to find the phrasing, I said if you're confused and they're trying to sing yourself, maybe you'll naturally find where you want to take a breath and it's just like speaking. But also I think when they have the words that make things very different to it, because you have to think about how to project this particular word that has a particular meaning. Maybe that's particularly matching this note on the guitar or piano or something. And then when this all combined, it just seems or makes sense. Well, it's when we don't have the lyrics, so there's less things we could, <laughs> you know, yeah. hold on to express. But yeah, but when they, but when try, they singing and then how they articulate, how they breath and how they, you know, uh, make the, the shape and dynamic, there are a lot of them based on the, the lyrics and the words and how they want to, I think, yeah, these words are quite, quite important. I mean, of course, when we play, we, we don't have to think about the words, but I think that way really helped me to think from a different way. Okay, I don't have lyrics, but how can I, uh, 
Tell and the story, does. maybe. Just tell yes, the story. Yeah. No, or the colors or certain feeling without mm -hmm. you know how how can I think about the other way to amplify them? So, yeah. so I think that really uh, inspired me a lot. <laughs> yeah. It's been the same for me with singers. It's it's a tremendous experience. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So thank you so much for your time. I've really enjoyed talking to you. I'm very much looking forward to hearing this concert. It's going to stream at 7.30 on Saturday, May 1st. And thank you, Jufei Yang. Thank you, David. I really uh, enjoyed your too. Take care. Take care. Bye-bye.